uh, Qantas in play today. That briefing just a short time ago. Uh, what's been the real weak link this time round in these results? Because it does historically kind of send a shudder through investors, uh, I suppose, consciousness to know the dividend is going, but also that, you know, we haven't been in this space before on the loss front, have we? We haven't, and again, it's that international business for Qantas which continues to struggle. It recorded, um, I think, a, lo a loss in earnings around $450 million. And you're right, this is the first time that Qantas has recorded a full year loss in 17 years uh, since it was uh, since it started uh, trading publicly. Uh, we saw the net profit come in around $249 million loss for the full year. Um, that's down from, uh, sorry, $234 million, down from $249 profit last year. And they did say that they prefer to refer to underlying earnings, which was positive around $95 million, but a significant drop off there, down from around $550 million from the previous years, but it was within expectations for the company. Um, certainly there's been a few factors which has really hit Qantas. Uh, the industrial disputes they've been going through have been very costly for the company. Uh, record fuel prices for, for their airlines, um, as well as continuing increased competition both on the international and domestic front. Now, as, as mentioned, internationals continue to struggle. Uh, domestic really has been holding up the business, but they're seeing increased competition from the likes of Virgin Australia there as well. Uh, certainly, their outlook for 2013 still looks very difficult for Qantas. They are uh, continued competition, particularly from Middle Eastern airlines, uh, they're backed by those oil-rich nations and offering alternatives in terms of routes, particularly on the way to Europe. And we've seen major restructuring in terms of their uh, aircraft. They've cancelled plans for 35 new aircraft uh, over the next five years, looking to uh, reduce their capital expenditure significantly. Now, Qantas does. Uh, trade at a significant discount in terms of price to book uh, in terms of it, its peers and this is really driven by the significantly lower return on equity that Qantas generates. Uh, if we have a look at, the, at a graph for Qantas over the past year, you can see it's been tough over the last couple of months. There was a huge drop off in share price in early June there and the performance, the stock is down around 20% for the quarter. Okay and Insurance Australia Group, Tim, I can see they're trading up about 1.3% at this stage. We did see some write downs in terms of its UK assets, but they seem to be expected. In fact, I can see Bell Potter senior analyst T.S. Lim saying it's an excellent result and he can see some upgrades coming through. What did you make of the numbers? It was a solid result, um, probably slightly above expectations, at least meeting expectations. Gross written uh, premiums were up around 11.5% for the year uh, to $8.99 billion. Uh, cash net profit after tax was up 17.5% on expectations. And insurance margin came in right between their guidance, 10.6%. Uh, they were expecting between 10 and 12%. So a very solid result there. The dividend announced it's 12 cents per share, also expected by the market. Uh, they target a payout ratio of between 50 to 70 percent of cash earnings so that uh, related to a 12 uh, cent per share dividend. Uh, what the market was looking for was some commentary on the UK review operations. Uh, there was not a huge amount of detail there. We did see a significant write down as you mentioned that was expected uh, but they are expected to come up with some kind of uh, into this review by the end of this calendar year. So the market will watch out for that one. In terms of IAG, they do have a general insurance focus. So in terms of a pure play general insurance uh, company, this, this is a good play. Uh, certainly the market has uh, looked at the sort of defensiveness and recession proof type nature of insurance companies recently, IAG has performed strongly over the past couple of months along with other insurance companies. Uh, they do have significant market power in terms of pricing power and economies of scales and uh, certainly this has been recognised by the market. If we have a look at a one year graph of IAG, you can see here over the past couple of months significantly yeah. outperforming the market. Um, for full year 2013, this, the momentum from this year is expected to continue on. Uh, gross written premiums are expected to rise, a little, uh, rise between 9 and 11%. Insurance margins are expected to be better around 11 to 13%. Uh, so the stock has been performing uh, significantly well and uh, it is a very solid result from the company today. Tim, let's switch. Let's talk Fortis, uh, not Fortescue, Fairfax. We'll talk Fortescue in a minute. Uh, just showing on screen. Uh, incidentally, Qantas shares have just hit the boards and they are rising. Uh, but really interesting because we didn't even talk to you about the fuel bill. And that's risen 18% on year. It doesn't actually look as if they are keeping a tight rein on that. If they are hedging, why on earth is the fuel bill continuing uh, to spike by that measure? Anyway, can we switch? Can we talk Fairfax? Because it's actually coming a little bit better than expected, even though the number is a decline and the shares are 
are sliding. What do you make of that as a takeout? Market have been guiding us towards about a 69.7 uh, print. Actually, that market said it would be about 68.3, so they've come in a little higher than that at 69.7 million six months to June. Okay, well, I haven't actually had a chance to look at these numbers as yet, but if it's better than expected, then that is good. I mean, Fairfax, certainly one of those companies that's been in the spotlight. In terms of structural shifts within the media space, uh, they do have a large amount of their revenues derived from print media, which has been struggling uh, significantly. Certainly, there's some of the stocks on the market that have performed very well uh, recently. It's been some of those online, whether it be uh, classified or advertising type companies, seat car sales, those kinds of companies have performed very solidly. And this has been reflected in the results but Fairfax Media certainly they've we saw a big capital raising uh, recently from them as well as other media companies but as I said I haven't had much of a look at this uh, result as yet so I can't really comment okay then let uh, let us ask you quickly about Fortescue we still haven't seen numbers out from then yet what you're expecting and I guess we'll uh, have all eyes on that iron or outlook too this will be one of the most interesting uh, releases for today in terms of full year results because iron ore is in focus at the moment. Seen a huge decline in the iron ore spot price, down over 20% since June. Um, it's fallen again overnight. It's approaching $100 a tonne at this rate, which could be seen quite soon. Uh, I think the issue was the market had a bit of an expectation that there was a pretty strong price floor between around $115 and $120 a tonne for iron ore. And this has been smashed uh, and it, as the price continues to fall. For Fortescue, probably looking for a net profit after tax of around $1.36 billion with a $0.04 cent dividend. And I think what the market will be interested in will be its outlook in terms of guidance on expansion, whether this is on track and how costs are, costs are going in terms of that expansion, uh, as well as commentary on, on their expectations for the iron ore market, uh, China in general, and also the, the steel market in China. Uh, they are looking to expand rapidly at the moment. Uh, run rate of around 95 million tonnes per annum expected by the end of this year, targeting 155 by October 2013. And uh, certainly the iron ore prices struggled due to a few factors, uh, one being seasonal weakness, third quarter is usually uh, particularly weak for iron ore. And also just a low confidence in trade at the moment. Uh, we're seeing global slowdowns. Certainly the Chinese economy as well as the euro crisis is just affecting general, uh, creating general uncertainty in the markets, which is affecting uh, all commodity prices. But in terms of cash costs, Fortescue, out of the big three iron ore players in Australia, they do have the highest cash costs up above $50 a tonne. Uh, Rio pulls it out of the ground at a cash cost of around 34 and BHP around $39. And while this is still a good margin, we've seen a decrease in Fortescue's price, mainly because with lower costs come lower cash margins and lower cash flows. And at the amount they're spending in terms of their expansion, uh, these lower prices are, is going to affect that. We've, see, we've seen two debt raisings from Fortescue recently, uh, one, one for uh, debt raisings in the billions to fund their expansions as costs continue to rise. Uh, but certainly, I think iron ore prices, a lot in the market are expecting a bit of a rebound in the fourth quarter. Generally, we need an improvement in the general macroeconomic picture to see a rebound in iron ore prices. But at risk at the moment with these lower prices, in particular, the high cost junior iron ore miners, as well as the Chinese domestic producers. Tim, let's talk Origin Energy. The stock is off in, in quite a substantial way. Uh, it has boosted its uh, full year uh, figures, its full year earnings, uh, but certainly that's on year. Even though it's looking at, with some caution into the future, is that justified that the stock's being sold off by over 5%? Oh, well, if it's off over 5%, that might be a little bit of an overreaction, possibly. I mean, it was a big jump in full year profits. Uh, I didn't get to read much into the numbers, but certainly Origin Energy. Uh, for a jump of uh, loss of 5%, that's a significant move for a stock like Origin on the market. And probably this would be uh, due to the comments of the cautiousness moving into 2013. I mean, the appeal of Origin Energy on one side of the business, it's got that utility type retail electricity business which generates steady cash flows. It allows it to pay um, a steady dividend. And these, uh, these this side of the business is uh, generally quite stable. But on the other side, it certainly has those upstream growth uh, options in terms of LNG projects and other exploration and oil and gas projects to drive growth moving forward. So uh, Origin generally quite positive on this kind of stock. It has traded at quite a low value for quite some time now. Um, certainly below $13 seems to be an attractive entry point to this stock. But coming, coming out with uh, cautious comments on 2013, uh, certainly that's no surprise this earnings season. We've seen a lot of uh, companies come out with quite cautious outlooks for 2013. But uh, the stock down 5%, that's disappointing.